So today I want to talk about light swarms. Why do I want to talk about light swarms today? Well, I've been thinking recently about predictions that I got wrong. One of those predictions was that Burning Abyss was made of fake advantage, so it wasn't going to go anywhere. And the other prediction was that light swarm rulers were going to wreck the format. Now, I was just thinking about that particular prediction, and I was just amazed to think about the fact that the last time we saw light swarms top was at the European WCQ. It's been a while, and I got to thinking a crazy thing about Light Swarms is that they topped less after the re release of their support than they did before the release of their new support. They actually had more major event tops. If you look at the ARG photo page, if you go down and you look at the Light Swarm ruler decks that have topped, there were more of them before Raiden came out, before Michael came out, than after that. And that was during the plus one Fire Fist and Triple Gunned Mermail format, which should have been much worse matchups for the deck in terms of consistency and power level than against Shadows or Satellanites. So so what the heck happened to them? It's not like new support could have made them worse, but what if that's exactly what happened? I'm having a good time, having a good time. What's up my Yu-Gi-Oh bros, I'm your host, one, the only, the RJB Zero. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! and Business Casual. So today's subject, and the thing that may have been the demise of Light Sworn Rulers, is a concept I call over-support. Oversupport is this mind-boggling piece of theory, which says that it is possible for a deck's performance in the meta to get worse if the deck receives too much support over too short a period of time. Now, this doesn't make any sense at first. Like, just at face value, it doesn't seem possible that just giving a deck support can make it do worse in the meta. But we've actually seen this happen in reverse in the past, and I'll get to that in a second. But first, why does this happen? Well, when a deck receives a lot of very good support, what people start saying is a card or a strategy is, quote, too good not to run. What happens is they see a card and it looks so good that they assume that it immediately improves the deck's strategy. And so they naturally run it because they feel that they have to because it's such a good card. And when they do that, a lot of the time they will end up altering the deck's strategy in a disadvantageous way. Now, like I said, we've seen this happen in reverse, in actually the very recent past. When Infernity's lost barrier to one, at least, they realized just how good Infernity Break was. They started running Break at three when they hadn't run break oftentimes at all in the past. And the reason was before they thought that Infernity Barrier was such a good card that they didn't need to run break. And after Barrier got hit to one, the deck actually improved because people started running break again. An even better example was when Windups lost the hand loop. Windups actually started topping more after the hand loop got hit than they did before the hand loop get, got hit. And the reason is because when they weren't playing the hand loop, they realized just how many better strategies the wind-up deck could produce. Before, when they had the hand loop, they felt like they had to run it because it was just so darn good. And when they stopped running the hand loop, they realized that they could shock lock and they could OTK. And there were so many better ways that wind-ups could be run that hadn't been used before. It even happened to some degree with Dragon Rulers, since the old Dragon Ruler strategy with super rejuvenation and the babies and stuff like that was so ridiculously good that people didn't feel like they had the space for little things like Dragon Ravine or Vanity's Emptiness or Return from the Different Dimension, which made the deck so darn good in the fall format. So how did this happen to Light Sworn Rulers? Well, the Light Sworn strategy has always been don't give a damn until you can go ham. What that means is they play a semi-defensive control game until they can set up for their boss monsters. And this is no exception when it comes to the Dragon Ruler Light Sworn variant. There are two ways of improving that strategy. The first way of improving that strategy is increasing the speed with which you set up for those boss monsters. The second way of improving that strategy is improving the control defensive game that leads up to summoning those boss monsters and possibly going for an OTK. Now recently, Light Swarns around the time of the release of Dragons of Legend have found a lot of pieces of support for the speed part of improving that strategy. They have rediscovered Needlebug Nest and Curry Bandit came into the game, and players started maxing out on these heavy speed cards, and that ended up sacrificing the other part of the game, the grind game, the control game, the part that led up 
to putting those boss monsters on the board, and that meant that they lost two really important parts of the Light Sworn strategy. The first was their defensive plays. They lost their ability to defend themselves from opponents' attacks and defend their own field presence, and they also lost their ability to whittle away at the opponent's resources and outs in order to clear a path for those boss monsters to go through properly. So when they received so many ridiculously good cards to improve the speed, they focused on putting those cards into the deck to improve the speed because they assumed that in putting those good cards into their deck would immediately improve the deck's strategy. However, when they did so, they weakened the strategy in the long run by making their boss monsters more vulnerable to your opponent's outs and by reducing their ability to defend their field presence. So that's how that happened to Light Sworn Rulers. I think that Light Sworn Rulers can actually come back into the meta if we realize how to balance these two parts of the strategy instead of just looking at all this good support for one strategy and deciding that's all we need to focus on. Over support is a real thing for a lot of decks and it's really dangerous and you really need to look out for it because it can have this kind of effect and you never know if you look past the over support you might discover something as crazy as the wind up shock lock so i hope you guys like this video if you did hit that thumbs up button if you didn't let me know why in the comment section below and of course subscribe for more deck discussion analysis and general you guys shenanigans thank you guys for watching i am your host the one the only the rjb zero and i got a jet see you guys